Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Today I have another coffin inspired dress for you all. This one is the subtlest yet, so don't worry if you're a little bit tired of the strangely gothic detailing I've been having going on lately, although this one, is st it's still there. I just think it's the subtlest yet. I was inspired by 1940s designs like these with these central pan panels surrounded by gathering. I thought I could do almost any shape as a panel on one of these, and so I thought, why not try and make one that was an upside down coffin. Something a little bit more 40s, and I'll be using a rayon crepe to make this dress today, although in a dark espresso brown color, so not black. So there's some small improvement there. Let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom, and I'll show you how I got started on this design. I'm going to begin with my bodice block front and back to do this design here. I'll have the design up, design up on the screen as well, and you may already be able to tell that since filming the rest of this video, I have caught a cold. So now you get very nasally, unfortunately goopy me, for the voiceover portion of this video today, I do apologize. So my voice is not quite up to scratch, and we'll see if I fall into many coughing fits during this situation. But I have my basic bodice block front traced here. I'm just gonna tip the shoulder up and out one quarter inch here at the tip of the shoulder. And then I've got a little bit of room past the center front here, just so I can draw the full coffin shape for the top of the bodice here and see what it will look like in full once it's cut on the fold because normally I'm working on one half of the bodice pattern if I'm doing something symmetrical um, but I want to be able to see the full shape of the coffin for the middle today. I am going to move this waist dart into the side so I have one giant side dart here just to smooth off the waist area to have a smooth area down here for drawing my coffin in. I'm going to take my ruler here and try and decide looking at the apex where I want this uh, like end the foot part of the coffin to be here and then i'm going to angle out towards the waist um, and you can have you know different shapes of coffin if you should so desire or different shapes in general whatever you would like um, i just wanted to of course try and make a kind of classical like cheap wooden coffin halloween decoration coffin shape today because that is the whole idea is to have this be secretly kind of goth but i sort of sketched in what i wanted and i would draw in a little bit more firmly with a marker so I can see, but you can see having that uh, other side past the center front to see what I need helps me see the full shape of the bottom half of this coffin here, but I'm not gonna need this in the actual patterning, so I'm gonna cut that off and I'll cut along that neckline and then the center piece. I can cut this extra dart away and then this piece will be cut apart from the main part of the bodice and I'll need to add seam allowance both to that center yoke, I guess for lack of a better term. I don't really know what this would be called, center panel my coffin, my bodice coffin. And then the side front of this will also need to have seam allowance as well. So I can go ahead and add that on there. Like so. All right, so now we have my two pieces for the bodice. I'm gonna go ahead and move all this dart fullness into gathering along the side of the coffin here. So that it'll look like gathering kind of radiates away from our coffin shape. And I'm going to draw one line from that center um, area up into the shoulder as well, just to add a little bit of gathering from the shoulder too. This is not uh, dart fullness. All this stuff down here that I'm moving now as I close the side dart into these little darts that will now be along the style line, those are all fit darts. Those are there to control the fit the same way that my normal darts would do. Um, so this is where my fitting fullness is going, but that line up into the shoulder, I will add in just extra fullness that is not there for fit reasons, it's just there for style reasons. And you'll see me do that a little bit more later after I cut this out the first time. And you'll see with my fabric, I needed to make some adjustments to my pattern. So we'll get into that later. But for now, I'm just going to tape that down, smooth that off. I've just split this into three nearly equal pieces here. And that's where my dart fullness is going along that style line. And again, up here, I'm going to open this up. Swing this open about an inch just to have a little bit of extra fullness up here into the shoulder as well. And then I can go ahead and smooth this off as well, like so. And then cut up off this excess. Voila. Tape down my floops here. And yes, I do have a cold during my favorite month of the year. It's very irritating. And now I am very behind on everything, which is disappointing to me for sure. Now I do just have a tracing of my back here where the shoulder is again tipped up a quarter inch at the tip and that still matches up. So I'm just gonna use this tracing on my back here and then I can go ahead and use this sleeve, which is just a three quarter length version of my sleeve pattern. So this is my sleeve pattern with the elbow dart and everything, just a shorter version of it. And with that, I can get started on the front of the skirt here. I'm gonna trace a copy of my pencil, pencil skirt front, of course, to work with. I'll draw in my darts where they need to be normally. And then I'm gonna move these around a little bit here. This first one is going to interact with where I need to line up my coffin piece from the 
bodice, so I need to move that over just a little bit. I'm just going to scooch this over a tiny bit um, just to get it out of my way while I draw my coffin in. And I am going to tape on a little bit of paper in the end as well to really figure out what the top half of this coffin needs to look like. But I'm just layering this central coffin yoke area closed along the seam allowance where it would be. And then I'm just using, again, scratch paper taped onto my pattern to see what this will look like once cut on the fold to get an idea of what the full coffin shape will look like. So I can go ahead and uh, work around that and refine it. I am just making this up and deciding what looks good to me. Um, you can, again, do any shape you would like, really. Uh, just the more complex the shape, the more annoying it will be to sew, which is up to you how terrible of a time you want to have, honestly. These very easy ge geometric shapes like this are quite easy to do. So either this or like a diamond is quite easy as well. But I'm just refining exactly what I want for that. And then I will take off the extra paper and the bodice piece as well. Put the bodice piece back aside and this extra coffiny bit I can throw away for now. And then I'm going to separate down from the top slat of my coffin to the hem down here because I'm going to add a pleat in here. I didn't want to do an A-line skirt on this just because I didn't want to have to hem a curved hem in round crepe today. So I wanted to keep the hem straight, so I'm using my pencil skirt pattern, but I will add a pleat in here along this style long, line along the front. That way I have at least a little bit more flow to this skirt without having to actually have it be A-line or in any other way gathered, etc. And I can cut that out like so, and then again, I'm going to have to cut off my coffin yoke like so. And then I'm going to cut down this style line that I created from the bottom of that to the hem, and then all this is going to need, that's right, seam allowance, because anytime I cut my pattern apart, I need to add seam allowance, all of the sides and like the waist seam, etc. of my pattern, my cardboard pattern that I started with always already has seam allowance added, so I only need to add seam allowance when I've cut the pattern into new style lines like this. So cut that off, and then I'm going to tape paper on to the side of this to be able to add seam allowance, but also to add three inches, so the width of my ruler plus another inch, and then plus my seam allowance, so three inches plus the half inch seam allowance, three and a half total, onto this piece in order to have a three inch pleat on this side. Of course, this will be cut on the fold, so I'll have a three inch pleat on either side, cascading down from my little upside down coffin shaped center bit on this dress. Let's cut that out. It is still a nice rectangle, so that makes my job easy. Use this spare paper to add more seam allowance over here on the skirt front side piece now. So now I have like a skirt center front, a skirt front yoke, and then the skirt front side piece here. And I do still have a little bit of work left to do on this in addition to adding this seam allowance, because again, I do want to move these darts over here into gathering along my coffin, just like I did on the bodice. This will fold down, so this is gonna get sewn. The seam allowance will get sewn together. I'll just show you how this will pleat like so. And then this is going to be a pleat like this. And then it will fit in all together, back together. So that's just how I'm gonna sneak a little pleat in here along the front of this skirt. But here we need gathering, so let's go ahead and move these darts. I'm going to take the one that's closest to my style line here, or I guess closest to the center front, and draw a line into the lower part of my style line, like so. I'm going to cut that open and move my dart fullness over there by closing this dart, slashing and spreading darts, as you see me do all the time here on the channel. Although if you haven't seen my darts video where I explain how darts work, I will go ahead and put a card up to that here, because it is very useful if you are new to working with darts. I'm going to close the second one the same way here. Now I have that all opened up into my style line for my coffin shape, like so, and I can tape this down, a little bit of extra in there, extra paper. And then this really is not very much gathering, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in some extra. Once again, just like I added some from the shoulder in the bodice, I'm gonna add some extra gathering from the side of the hip into this style line. So I'm just gonna draw a line into the hip, and I'll open this up and add another inch of fullness in here. This again is not fit fullness, it's style fullness, so you can have your darts used, your, your dart fullness is can be used as fullness around your design, but you can also add in additional fullness that's not there for fit reasons, it's just there for fashion reasons. But this will gather down into this yoke piece, which will be attached to this center front pleat piece. I am just gonna use the back of my pencil skirt pattern for this. And then I just need to trace some facings real quick. So I have the spare paper that I was using to sketch my coffins on, so it's messy paper. You can't really tell what's going on here, but I'm just tracing a facing tracing a facing. The fact that that rhymes is really disappointing. Um, tracing a facing for finishing the rest of this neckline here. I will um, self face the coffin section down the center of this dress with itself. So that's the only part of this that's going to be lined is the coffiny bits, but the rest of this will be finished with the facing along the V neckline here and then along the back neckline as well. <clears throat> so yes, if I have at all seemed quiet the past week on my social medias, etc., 
Not that I don't disappear normally anyway. Usually I'm like embroidering something or doing something fun. This time I was in bed with a cold. So much less exciting, but I'm on the mend and hopefully my voice will come back to us soon as well because this is ridiculous. But with my facing patterns, I am now done with the patterning portion. I can cut everything out. I have this bittersweet rayon crepe from moodfabrics.com to work with today. It's actually rather thick. It's almost a little bit too thick, which is so rare for a rayon crepe that I actually really liked working with this. It made it really easy to work with. It did do some things I wasn't expecting just because it was so almost thick and foamy, um, but at least it wasn't too, too floopy. It had a lot more flomp than floop this time. <clears throat> As we all know, my official vocabulary for these things, one can only do so much because you can't feel it. And uh, unlike, you know, perfume, perfume people who can describe scents very well, I can't describe textures. I can only describe textures so well, especially when my brain is only at half function, let's face it. But I'll take my front pieces here. I've marked with pins where I need to have my gathering stitching. I'm going to run two lines of gathering stitching along the style line side here, where this will connect to the style line of the coffin. Of course, I'm going to leave my tails pretty long on that and then just do another line of large stitches next to the first. So I can have parallel lines of stitching to do that gathering. And then those need to be gathered down and connected to our, uh, the bottom half of our coffin here, up here on the bodice. Once again, uh, I feel like in the finished dress, you won't really notice that that's what this is inspired to look like. You'd have to be really analyzing me and staring at me quite a lot, which I probably wouldn't appreciate, honestly. But I started gathering this down and I, you know, tied off my gathering threads in order to be able to distribute these gathers along this style line. And I was just noticing, um, what, why aren't there any? Uh, something about this fabric, it just really like ate up the fullness. In a thinner fabric or like a rayon chalet, I think you would this would have been enough. Uh, my, the original amount of fullness I had in this. And I've never really had my dark fullness not be enough. It's unusual for me. But today I'm going to have to exaggerate this pattern piece because this is just not enough gathering. I think we can agree. Like That's kind of pitiful and sad. We need more than that. So let's go back over to the blue patterning table of doom and try again. Luckily, I had a little bit more of this fabric. So I'm going to draw another line up into the shoulder. I shouldn't have done this. I don't like the shoulder gather on this, um, but everywhere else this works fine. So I did one line from that style line in the center up into the arm side. And then here I was like, where do I need to put this? I want the gathers to kind of radiate towards the side seam. So let's do a line out into the side seam. And I'm sorry I'm using a fine Sharpie here because you can't really see, but you'll see what's happening in just a moment. So I'm splitting this up into the shoulder and adding another wedge of fullness in here. Uh, you do have to be careful when you're adding extra fullness that's there for style reasons and not for fit reasons. This is the kind of thing that would be good to have a mock-up going on. But of course, I uh, have my schedule far too packed to be making mock-ups. But I should have slipped a little bit more excess off of that um, when trimming that down. But eh, it's right. I wish I had just added it here in the next one. But hindsight is a beautiful thing. And you'll see what I mean in the finished dress. <sighs> Don't judge me too harshly. I should have made a mock-up, okay? Even me. Just with something like this, with extra fullness that's there for style reasons, that's when things you know, can get really nitpicky. Um, when I'm just using my dart fullness, I never need to care about a mock-up, but when I'm starting to add things in just for fun, things get out of hand fast. But just filling those extra wedges of fullness in, and then I will cut this out of that brown fabric after I tape down my floops here, and try again, and we'll do the same steps. We have my gathering threads. Oh, and look how much more there is to put into this style line now, so we can actually look a little bit more like our sketch so that's uh, one way to add extra fullness if your dart fullness isn't enough. If you are someone who doesn't have a huge difference between your bust and waist size, um, your dart fullness is going to be a smaller slice of pizza, as it were. Um, you'll have less of an angle to work with and move around. So you might not have a ton of gathering. And so this is one way to get around something like that. You just add more fullness in for style reasons if you just want more gathering, as opposed to it being there for fit reasons. So my fit gathering and my extra gathering are all in here and this will fit down to my body, but also have the amount of gathering we're looking for. And I will just move that gathering around once my gathering threads are tied off so I can distribute it evenly along this style line here and pin this piece to its coffin yoke-ish. I feel like <laughs> the words I'm saying sound silly enough without me being nasally and a mess as well, so that's a real shame. We don't have any throat coat soother tea in this house for some reason. <sighs> which is unfortunate. And I haven't been able to enjoy a single pumpkin spice latte yet. Did you know that caffeine is bad for you when you're recovering from a cold, by the way? It's because caffeine raises your heart rate and your body is already working 
to get over the cold, which makes sense to me. So I'm being good and not even drinking coffee, which could contribute to my silliness even further, because let's face it, me without coffee. I still talk this fast, but um, it's just not my normal state of being. Stitching that down, like so. I did leave the top of this, the top half inch of this seam undone. You can kind of see if you're looking very closely that the very top half inch of this is open, and that is because I'm going to put my facings on everything, and it's just easier if that's waiting open for me to do that later. But I'll press all my seam allowance towards the inside of my coffin because I'm going to uh, line that area later, and that for, therefore that will all be covered later. So all of this on either side is pressed towards the uh, inside there, towards the center front basically. Then over here back on the blue table, I'm going to go ahead and trace in my elbow darts and my darts on the back and my darts for the back of the skirt. All the darts need to be traced and pinned from my pattern onto my pieces here. Always a little bit extra fun in a floppy rayon, but yeah, that's all right. I have had some questions about the blue patterning table of doom recently. I've been trying to go through my comments while I'm sick. At least even if I can't record or sew or do anything, at least I can reply to comments. So I've been trying to do that when I'm feeling up to it, uh, when my brain isn't completely full of sludge. And I've had some questions about the blue table. And the blue table is just like a kid's school activity craft table. I didn't choose this table. My parents have had this table since I was very small. Um, my parents used to run an after school, like a business that was like an after school arts center for children. So like kids could come after they got out of school and instead of doing karate or dance or what have you, they did art classes at my mom's or my parents' business. And this table was from that business that only lasted a few years, sadly, because you know, art sadly not as popular as karate, which is a bummer. I think they should both be popular, but we do still have this big activity craft table. I can actually link below to the style of table this is. It's just like a school table. Um, and it actually is up on bed risers because it is not actually tall enough to be a drafting table in any way, shape, or form. That's part of the reason it has doom because it hurts my back sometimes. And one day, when and if I move, I will set up a new sewing room, of course, for all of us. And I don't know what we're going to do about the blue table situation because I would like a different table, but it needs to be blue because I need to be able to say blue patterning table of doom, right? Or do we upgrade to the green patterning table of doom? We'll see. I have my skirt side fronts here. I have my little skirt front coffin yoke piece, and I need to start connecting everything together. So again, I'm gonna need to have gathering up here. So I'll put two lines of gathering stitching along where that excess is to be able to fit it back into my coffin yoke. I'm just marking that with pins here. And then I can go ahead and grab my front piece that needs to be pleated, remove my pins from that. I'm actually gonna run some serging along the two straight edges of that before I forget. And then I will start figuring out how to pleat that down. Um, I just need to leave a half inch on either side and then make it so that the rest pleats to fit our coffin piece here. So could I have measured all this non nonsense and like done it officially? Yes. Was I gonna? No. So, you know, that's me. You're used to it. If I were a more precise human, perhaps, you know, things would be different, but alas. I am a little bit slapdash in this world. I try my best to get to slowly over the years, get a little bit more couture about things, but only so much at a time, sadly. But I will go ahead and try and pleat this a little bit over here. Although you can really see the body of this crepe is absolutely fighting me on this. It does not want to, there's no crispiness at all here. It's all floop and flump. But once I had it pressed into submission at the top, I wanted to actually have the rest of this be smooth. But up here, I wanted my pleats to be stuck in place so that I could sew this together to the coffin piece, like so. Very short little seam here, like so. All right, <clears throat> and then I can go ahead and pin and sew my shoulder seams of my of my bodice spacings together as well. But yes, quite a few darts to sew over here on all the skirt pieces, my elbow darts, etc. Just tie those off like I normally do. And then again, I can sew that shoulder seam for the front facings and back facings, the bodice facings, basically, like so. Do both of those, sewing over my fine pins as usual. I do need to get some new fine pins. I tried a box of new ones that were, again, from Dritz, but they weren't these exact ones with the glass heads. I tried, they're like nice fine silk pins and they were like absolute trash. So I won't be using those. I will be using either these glass headed ones or the clover glass headed pins, but finding nice pins seems to be a bit of a trouble these days but I can go ahead and press all my darts now as well. And I'll set these pieces over by my serging machine so I can serge the raw edges of these because I'm not gonna fully line this dress. I'm only going to line the portion where the coffin is. And I'm going to line that both for structural reasons to give it a little bit more 
of like a firm base so that hopefully those lines stay without me having to interface that area. Just I didn't use any interfacing on this project just because this fabric was already on the thicker side and I didn't want to make it any more bulky than it already was because it was already kind of bulky enough. So I think if I had interfaced the coffin pieces, like the yoke pieces on the bodice and skirt and then also the facings, I think that would have been better. Um, but it just would have been so bulky in this fabric. So if I was using anything any more lightweight than this, I probably would have done that. But yes, I'll just go ahead and serge my raw edges, everything except for the neckline essentially, over here on the serger machine. With some fun green lighting and my funny trinket boxes shaped like snakes and cauldrons behind the machine. Because for me, of course, it is Halloween all year round, luckily. Although now that it's properly Halloween season, I would like to be in better health. But we can't have it all, my friends. We cannot have it all. But you can see I left the areas that will be encased in the coffin eventually unsurged. So up here, my edges that I need to gather down into my style line, I don't have those surged. None of this is surged right here because it's going to be tucked into the coffin later and then faced. So you'll see that when I come to it and then you will know what I mean. But I'm tying off my gathering thread here. I have always heard the rumor that you're not supposed to tie off your gathering thread, but but I do it. Um, so, you know, sometimes I break rules. It's important to learn the rules first and then figure out which ones you prefer to break, I suppose. That's how I feel about sewing. I'm not a stickler for methodology of sewing. Whatever works for you, I always say, is good. Um, so for me, I sew over my fine pins. My machine doesn't mind them at all. I don't really hit them, so, you know, it's not a bother to me. And I uh, serge when I could, you know, do a finer finish, perhaps. But since I have the serger here, I might as well use it. I didn't invest in that machine, actually. My mom did, randomly on a whim, and then she never used it again, and I commandeered it. So I just got lucky with that one. But once the top of this is pinned, I can pin the rest of the length of that as well. And I will sew my skirt side fronts to my center front and yoke that are already become one at this point. Really, I mean, sometimes my narration is already rambly and unhinged, but it's just going to be on an, a whole new level today. I think I say that every time, but I, I never know what's coming and it turns out it could get worse. But again, I'm going to press my seam allowance towards the inside of my coffiny piece here. I will put a clip at the corner of the top of my coffin here. That way I can press the rest of this long seam open. Just here, off camera basically. And then I'll press the rest of this open and flat. Luckily this fabric presses quite well, which is always nice. And then I can go ahead and gather down the other side and fit the other side in same way so that my skirt front will be ready to go. So here's my skirt front all put together and I can go ahead and sew my skirt backs onto this. Of course, I already sewed the darts into those earlier, so these are ready to go. And I will just pin along the side seams here, match these up and sew those together and my skirt will be finished. And I'll just have to keep working on the bodice and, you know, find some sleeves maybe, you know. And to put together my bodice, I will go ahead and stitch the backs onto the front now at the side seams and at the shoulder. So let's pin that and then up here at the shoulder as well and then back over here on the machine half inch seam allowance as always go ahead and stitch those like so just do both the side and the shoulder usually i do all four at once but sometimes i have to switch up my order of operations depending on what design decisions i've made but this one's pretty straightforward after you get that nonsense going on with the coffin in the front other than that Pretty uh, simple. The back of the dress, at least, is completely simple. But I'll do the other side of the bodice the same way. But I'll do the other side of the bodice the same way. And again, just run those through the machine. The lovely Singer 99K with some spooky green lighting. That's right. And once I have those pressed open, all nice, a little bit of steam in here, trying not to get iron shine on this. It did want to a little bit, but it's trying to be careful. You can use the pressing cloth, by the way, if you're really worried about iron shine. I'm just going to pin the underarm seam of my sleeves, both of those. Let's do it at 600 times speed or whatever I have this set to. If only I were able to do it that quickly. 
And now the rest of this, I need to go ahead and put my facing along the neckline before I finish the coffiny bit on the inside. So I'm going to pin my facing right sides together along the outside of my garment, along the neckline, of course. And I will stitch these on, and then I will do understitching as well to help hold these on the inside of my garment, especially in this floppy fabric, because it's got a lot of flomp. It's good for, like, making draped evening dresses and things, but it's almost a little bit much for this particular design. Meh. I probably could have done this design with a lighter weight fabric, but I wanted to make it in dark brown because I thought that would be practical and also, again, kind of tied into the coffin theme. You know what I mean? So I will clip my curves here at the back kind of neckline area of this where there's a curve to clip. You know me, I love clipping a curve. And then I will put my understitching in. I'm basically, what you can't see here is that the seam allowance is towards my left hand. So it's underneath the facing side here and I'm stitching it down to the facing basically about an eighth of an inch away from my original seam line. Just stitching that seam allowance down to the facing side so that it will all lay nice and like this facing will roll under once I press it in place and stay there, luckily, like so. And so I have that folded under and pinned to my seam allowance at the shoulder. And then I can start working on my coffin here. Um, I can actually also do this coffin bit last, but I don't know why I started doing it now before I had the rest of the dress together. I guess I just felt like it. So let me grab my extra bodice yoke and skirt yoke here. I'm going to sew those along the waist seam first. So I'm going to sew my coffin together first here. Quick little seam here over on the machine. You could also do this without having a seam in this coffin. Um, it just would be a little bit more fiddly to sew this dress together. We all know how I like having a waist seam. It usually makes things easier. But stitch that. And this seam actually almost disappears because this fabric is so matte. They call this fabric bittersweet like chocolate over on um, Mood. And it really does kind of look like dark, dark, bittersweet chocolate cocoa powder or something. But I will fold in all the edges of this coffin here so that I can use it to cleanly finish the other coffin that's now part of the dress. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But again, this is a rayon crepe, so it's a bit floopy. Um, this design detail would work even better if I had um, interfaced this or stiffened it in some way put a layer of even uh, organza in here, but this fabric was already so thick that I didn't want to bother. And then I will go ahead and sew the top of the coffin, the two coffins together, the one that's part of the dress and the separate facing coffin now. I will put those right sides together. So this is basically on the outside of the dress. And I will sew that to the half inch of coffin that's been hanging off my dress for a while here. And I can sew that and then flip this to the inside and you'll see what magic we can create to make this all smooth on the inside. Like so. So I just need to press this buddy in place. I'm going to press that seam like so. And then press my sides back in. And then I will fold everything into submission. That's right. All right, so this gets folded down to the inside. And we're going to use it to cover all this seam allowance in here. So all that nasty seam allowance that I left pressed towards my coffin, I will now cover it with a second coffin. One way to handle the situation. I could have used like a different fabric with, for this um, because this fabric was so thick, but I didn't have any brown lining laying around because mostly I work with black and not brown. So I didn't have anything that would match well enough that if it was peeking out, it would be okay. So I just used the same fabric despite it being kind of bulky. But I'm just gonna pin this in place like this. I'll do the rest of it later and then I'll have to hand sew that down in place. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna pin this kind of up out of the way because for some reason, I did this out of order, and now I want to go ahead and finish the rest of the dress. So I'm just pinning it out of the way for now, and I will hand finish all that later. But for now, I'm going to match up my coffin along the front of my skirt and bodice, like so, match up my side seams, pin everything together along the waistline seam so I can sew this dress together, the skirt and bodice together, to become a dress, basically. the machine go ahead and stitch that again just like everything else half inch seam allowance and you'll notice I did have both the bodice and the skirt waist seams surged after I had sewn the darts in so that they will be finished and I don't have to worry about it being raw here 
at my waist on the inside of my dress. <clears throat> Although this is a dress where I would be wearing it over a slip, um, usually, 99% of the time. Or I should be, at least. If I'm not, it's because I'm being lazy. And that is unacceptable. But, you know, relatively common. And with that pressed, I can let down that coffin and finish pinning it to cover my seam allowance. And then I'm just going to, you can either slip stitch or fell this to the seam allowance underneath, basically to completely smoothly finish this whole area on the inside. And it will look pretty from the inside now. And of course you can do that like invisibly so that the stitches don't show on the outside. Just taking tiny slip stitches on the inside here. And that's what that looks like after that's all stitched down. So I have that felled to the seam allowance along the inside. And then I will go ahead and line up the center back of this dress. And then from where the zipper will end down to the hem, I will sew that shut. This pencil skirt doesn't have a ton of room, but it has enough that I didn't feel like I needed to leave a slit in it. So it should be fine. But I'm just using my one inch seam allowance along the center back. That's just what I leave myself in my patterns. I like to have extra room where I'm gonna be putting a zipper in. So my back uh, openings usually are one inch wide seam allowance. And I'm gonna fold that inch back for the rest of the dress that's open from where the zipper will end to the neckline, I suppose. Fold that back using a hem gauge to help me gauge that <laughs> to be an inch. And then I will go ahead and set my zipper and I am just gonna do my lapped zipper like I normally do. I will stitch in this side here over on the machine. Um, I usually have the underside of my zipper on the right-hand side and then the lapped side of my zipper as the left-hand side. And so I'm just gonna stitch this here on the machine. You can see I got a little pucker in there. Ugh, let's do what I can with some uh, steam from the iron, hopefully unpuckerify that. And I'm just stitching this right down next to the zipper tape and then I will pin the other side a little bit overlapped and I will actually hand stitch that down. I did not film that step for you because I need to do a whole zipper tutorial sometime, A and B, in dark bittersweet chocolate fabric with dark thread. It's really quite impossible to see what I'm doing anyway. So I wanna do an example for you of different ways I set in zippers, which there aren't that many, but I wanna do an example zippery video where we get into the details sometime next year. Because yes, I do have my video schedule planned out through next December. So it's hard for me to just like, throw in a video sometimes because I have a lot of plans in motion at any time, which makes delays like being sick very, very irritating to me. I had just thrown a line of gathering stitching into my sleeve cap here, and I was pulling on that a little bit just to gather the very top of it, just so it cups over the shoulder. I'm not actually wanting gathers at my sleeve cap. That's not part of this design, but it just helps me set in my sleeves here, which I have now done. And I can sew those in to the main body of the garment. Again, a lot of people have trouble with sleeves. I wish I knew exactly what was going wrong so I could help but usually my sleeves work. I don't know. Um, I don't usually have a lot of sleeve trouble, which makes me feel like I should knock on wood because this is something I wouldn't like to change. At the same time, it would be nice to know how to help others who have a lot of sleeveal problems, but I'm just not one of them. But once my sleeves are in, the rest of this dress is basically done. So I just have to hem those sleeves and then hem the dress itself. And this bunny will be ready to wear. I do think I need to make a few little tweaks on this design before I make it again. I will take out some of that extra fullness I put into the neckline and you'll see it kind of floops weirdly in the finished dress. You should tell me you like it anyway though, so I'll feel less bad about it. Okay, maybe. Help me, I'm, I'm sick, you know? Make me feel better. <clears throat> so yes, it's not perfect, this dress, which is unfortunate because I quite like this fabric. Although they do still have some at Mood, so should I just get more and like make the dress again? Eh, it's possible. I wouldn't mind doing it in the future. If I have to order anything from Mood, I may throw this in my cart. Unless all of you run over and order it, which would be mean, so don't do that. But I'm just going to turn my hem up twice here, press this, and then, of course, hand stitch it into place, and this dress will be finished. Thank you for bearing with me while I've been sick this week, and I will hopefully be back to full Halloween form next week for you all. here is my finished brown crepe 
slightly gothic coffin dress. You can kind of see the upside down coffin here in the middle. Again, this one is the subtlest yet. I really don't think you would notice that's what's going on with this unless I told you or like made a joke about it. But I certainly wouldn't mind having this dress in other colors in the future. Um, maybe a black one. No surprise there. Uh, maybe navy blue, just for a little bit of variety. But I think it's a very classic 1940s style. I really like how the skirt came out. Even without flaring the skirt, it still has a little bit of movement, which I think is nice. I wouldn't mind a full length version of this style of skirt either. And I'm glad to have this pattern in my library moving forward. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this project came together today. And thank you as always for watching. And thank you to my patrons for making my work here online possible. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.